Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sharing some gratitude and a spiritual message. Good morning, and good morning, Ani. A spiritual message of safety. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, my friends. Good morning from Atlanta. Rachel LaForce reporting live for our post-gratitude walk. I am late this morning, but I am here. So for my friends that were waiting and ready at 8.15, thank you so much for showing up. Anyway, I love you so much. Good morning from Atlanta. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We have had very sick boys. We caught the stomach bug. Good morning, good morning. So the last four and a half days, I've been in like sick parent mode, which if you haven't had the opportunity, wow, blessings on blessings. Um, we have been <clears throat> uh, cycling through that. Good morning, good morning. So um, yes, so I'm a little late this morning, but I am here I've got my candle lit for us as our messages come through. Good morning, good morning. And yeah, so let's get started. If you're popping in, as you do, uh, it's the gram. And you're like, who's this woman? My name is Rachel Force, longtime comedian uh, and uh, spiritual speaker. So I'm here to offer you uh, some words of encouragement Typically Monday mornings, I do a, a gratitude walk for myself. Messages come through and they're things that I want to share with you. So I trust if you hear this, it's exactly what you needed to hear exactly when you needed it. Which is interesting um, because the thing that's been coming up for me is like safety. Like when you have been in, um, you know, like, <laughs> let me hear you. If you have an overactive nervous system and have always lived in hypervigilance, good morning, good morning, friends. And so that's your natural state. Your natural state is that there's always an emergency. Your nervous system can't slow down. Racing thoughts. We got to go. We got to go. Lots of caffeine. and uh, Right. And then we, if you're like me, <laughs> uh, then you drink a lot because you want to calm that down. Right. There's all these different ways that we do that. Rather than we haven't had as many opportunities to be taught, hey, this is actually something that you can fix. This is something within your power. Good morning. Good morning. So that's been a huge part of what I've been doing for myself because I was like, Rachel, you're no longer like living in that state. That literally is no longer like your outside surrounding, right? But if you haven't, if you've experienced a lot of trauma and trauma is something that happens internally, right? It can happen externally as well. Good morning, good morning. But a lot of the trauma that we don't talk about is just like, ooh, the things that like hit our body and our body holds on to that, right? Because our mind, got, I mean, think about all the times we have to disassociate or we don't want to think about it or it's like, oh, we forgot that thing or we're just moving on for that breakup or I don't want to feel that grief. Well, great, your brain can do that for you. So sorry to report, your body cannot. And your body loves you so much and oh, are we so rude to our secret keeper. Could you imagine another person who just holds all of your secrets and you're like, ah, you're trash. Like we would be like, thank you so much. Don't tell anyone. Like that person would be so important to us. And that's what our body does. Our body holds everything for us. It holds for us the things that we're not ready to deal with yet. It holds on to all of the things that we don't want to think about. It, hold, it holds on to all of it, but it doesn't have to but it's up to us to get conscious of that thing and then to be ready and to allow our body to process these things so that we can let them go. <clears throat> Not for the faint of heart, okay? Uh, Mama has been, you know, if you guys were following my hashtag postpartum fitness journey, not because there needs to be one, okay? But that I was tired. I have two young boys I have to chase around. And I was like, you know, I carrying both of my boys up a hill is carrying a 65-pound bag up a hill. So, yeah, I needed to do some exercise. So I was doing that, but it was, you know, really high intensity. Again, good morning, good morning. Sharing um, some spiritual messages of gratitude. If that is of interest to you, stick around. Uh, and so I was like, my body is really wanting to release some heavy stuff. What happens for me is everything gets stuck right here. And again, what our brain can't process, our bodies always will. 
uh, when I was really in a state of not speaking my truth and just being really codependent and saying yes to everything, um, I had lockjaw. I was on a plane with Second City traveling its comedy theater to New York to go and do like a three day showcase and my jaw would not unlock. I'm on the plane through the a bite into a sandwich and I couldn't eat the sandwich. I don't know if you're falling. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's not good, right? So again, our body will do for us what perhaps we're not ready to pay attention to yet. So a lot of my attention always gets stuck right here. Why? Because it's like, oh, you know, um, it, it, that, that sense of like the weight of the world, right? It's like, oh, it's everything that has to get done. A lot of times I hunch over it. It's that stuff of fear, right? If you lived in an abusive household or had, you know, anything like that where you don't know where the threat is coming from, maybe you grew up in a lot of poverty, right? And there's always that fear because you don't know what's coming. And especially when you do it as a kid, at least if we're in those states of being as an adult, we feel like there's at least some, a little bit more choice, even if we don't know where that choice is going to present itself yet, right? So a lot of these things that are stuck in our body are actually not even things that happen to us as an adult. Most of the time, the things that we are still carrying from the ages of like three to 24. Some of you are like, Rachel, I'm 23. And like, God bless. You know what I mean? How are your knees? You must feel so young and spry. Uh, and so that's what we want to do. And so what I have been doing to really reverse this is I have to get super conscious about the idea that I'm not in those spaces anymore, that I'm okay, that I am safe, and that in every moment, like, because, you know, the boys have been sick for four days, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to get back to this person. I didn't email this person back, and then they're going to want to leave, and they're not going to want to work with me, and then, da, 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 da. and I have already created an entire, just beautiful opus of chaos, and people being angry with me, and me being late on something, and it's not going to work out, and how often do we do that? We do that all the time, every day. And the true reality is that we don't have to do that and that none of that is true. If people are going to get upset with you, they were going to get upset with you one way or the other. It doesn't matter what you do. It is our job to have clear communication to make sure we're, you know, there's a difference between, oh, I went on a bender for four days and just ignored everything and now I'm coming back and da, da, da. right? There's a difference between what are the things that are our self-responsibility and what what's just life? We don't need to over-apologize for life. You know, I don't need to over-apologize. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't email you in the middle of like two children puking on me. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hope you want to work with me. Bye. I'm bye. I'm going to trust that everything that I need to do is going to get to you exactly at the time that it needs to get to you. Bottom line. And what that does, right? It circles back. Uh-oh, here it comes to my idea of empowerment that you are empowering yourself to know that you are safe, the things that you need are going to get to the people that they need to when they do, and it's going to be okay. And even, good morning, good morning. Let's say, let's go even deeper than that. Let's say you are in one of those really tough situations right now, and you're like, Rachel, you don't understand. There is a lot of hypervigilance. I'm trying to like leave my ex-husband, or I'm trying to co-parent with a narcissist, or I'm, you know, like in the thick of my eating disorder, like whatever it is. And it's like still bringing to your awareness that we can do things that are difficult without having to carry that hypervigilance, that we are safe, that we trust ourselves to take care of ourselves. And the more it's like every time I can feel all that creep up and then I just have to keep saying it over and over, in this moment, you are safe. In this exact moment, you are safe. And that doesn't matter. I have a, a friend who's going through a really, really tough time, struggling up to hold on to their house, lots of stuff going on. And, you know, they're like, Rach, if I lose everything and I even in that moment and I'm like, and then we'll get it back. We'll get it back. That there, you know, when we, when we, it's like, let's not make a hard thing harder. Let's, you know, it's like, oh, that if I could have done better or I could have do, 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 do. at every moment. All of the time, we're doing the best we can as we can. And God willing, we collect those tools. We, you know, do some self-empowerment. We connect with a higher power, however that you define that. And slowly, we can work our way. I wish I could save this broadcast. Luckily for you, you can. So it'll be saved on my page. So um, if you follow Rachel LaForce, you can pop over there and it'll be saved. In fact, I have a group of videos that are all gratitude blocks. So if you enjoy this um, they're not timely. It's just kind of the message that's coming through for me. So you can always pop through any of those at any time. So they're there for you. 
Um, so yeah, just this idea of receiving, right? We're going into the holidays and it's this huge idea. Yeah, you're so welcome. I'm glad you're here. Have a wonderful week. Um, this, of course, of course. Are you kidding? Thank you guys for being here. Oh my gosh, what a blessing. Are you kidding? Um, so this evening I am doing uh, some intuitive readings at a bookstore here in Sandy Springs called Phoenix and Dragon. Eventually these will be events that I'll take on the road and eventually we'll do a big world tour. For now, we're going to share some stories and some time with some folks here in Sandy Springs and always delivering the thing I need to hear. I love it, Ani, of course. Yeah, right? Lots going on and that, that feeling of like in this moment, I am safe and everything I need that I have. And that is what true receiving is. That's what I was going to say this evening in Sandy Springs. I'm teaching about how to receive and what that means. And so often we're like, oh, that means abundance from the universe. Does that mean I'm going to get this new car or that, that guy is going to come along or I'm going to get this thing? And yes, there is this idea of practicing receiving to receive bigger things. But until you can receive your own sense of safety, the fact that you are safe all of the time, no matter what, and that you are going to always make sure you get to where you need to be, that you are safe. Those other things of receiving, let's not even go there yet right? Let's just start here in this place. And I think that <clears throat> for so many of us, it's hard to receive because it's always like, you know, the be a good girl or do this or do that. And then we want to prove to everybody. And then also a lot of us are just nurturers in general, right? So that muscle gets overworked. So giving, 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 giving. And then we go into the season where it's like, oh, it's a season of giving. It's a season of giving. Oh, it's a season of giving. Da, da, da. And then by the time it's done, it's like, why do I feel like a big, huge, heaping piece of crap? right? If it was just such a magical season. Because giving and receiving is the same thing as day and night, right? It is a spiral that goes around and it has to serve on both places. You can receive and you are okay to receive and what that means to you. That overgiving is going to go out way too quickly. So we have to refill it. And that receiving is being able to receive yourself and in any moment, especially those moments of uncomfortability and going, I'm okay. As this moment, I, you know, this morning, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I'm late to this. I made a commitment to my community and then I've got all these emails. Then that woman just hired me for a private show. I haven't gotten back to her. And I'm trying to feed my youngest and get everybody out the door. And I'm like, in this moment, we're safe. In this moment, we are safe. We have everything that we have. And then we're going to move into the next moment. Because I'll leave you with this, which is my, my favorite thing right now. Maybe a little Buddhist for your taste, but how beautiful. That... You don't have a life, you are life. Meaning when we accept that all of these things that we have carried with us, all of these things that other people have said to us that live in our body, uh, you're not enough, you're always late. Well, you're selfish. Oh, you always want to be the center of attention or, oh, you're just lazy. Oh, you're using me. Oh, you know, like, oh, well, you should, have you thought about losing a little bit of weight? Oh, isn't she so skinny? She thinks she's better than everybody. Like whatever these stories are that people have given to you, again, they gave to you. It is not yours to receive, right? Return to sender. This is not for me. And we carry all of that all the time into everything we do as though it's ours. And it's not. It was never yours. It was never yours. It was somebody else who decided that they didn't like themselves, that they thought that they were trying to be skinny so that other people would like them. They felt uncomfortable in their body. They thought that it would, you know, that da 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 and so that's what I mean. You don't have a life. These aren't the things that you have to take care, you know, take with you everywhere you go as though they're buried treasure, that you are life. And so you get to decide what that means for you. What does it mean for you to continue to evolve? What does it mean for you to be like, in this moment, I'm okay. I'm alive and I'm okay. And that's it. That's all I got for you. I'm so glad you're here. I trust that those of you that are going to pop on and see this later, it's going to catch you exactly as it needs to. I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, please share this with somebody who needs this message. I love you all so very much. I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm so honored that you're here um, and wishing you a wonderful, warm week wherever you are and just always remembering that at any given time. I am safe. I am safe in this moment safe in every single moment you are okay and if you start to feel crazy doing it know that I'm just somewhere you know what I mean just wiping up a diaper and uh emailing people for opportunity going oh she's safe in this moment I'm safe 
All right. Thank you, Ani. Right back at you. You are the best. Have a wonderful week. I love you all so very much. And I will see you back here next Monday, hopefully right on time at 8.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. Love you. Mean it.